heaven. Hello and welcome to Who's Best, a show where Ilo Cloudane take games and that give you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Who's Best, a show where Ilo, I, my dad's a poopy. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Who's Best, a dumb show for poopy babies. <laughs> what do you think? I think you should not subscribe. Legend of Dragoon, or as Sony wanted to think of it, the Final Fantasy Killer, was a PS1 title dripping with potential. This game was created with one purpose, and that was to compete with the best of the best. Final Fantasy 7 and 8 at the time were big hits, and Legend of Dragoon aimed to take a piece of that action. Unfortunately, that didn't exactly happen. The game sold well, but it didn't grab enough attention to solidify it in the halls of JRPGs. As time has gone on, Legend of Dragoon has become a pseudo cult classic that has received absolutely no love from Sony. But not from this channel. I aim to shed some much needed light on this title and answer the question, which party member is best? There are nine party members in total, two of which are replaced, so technically there are seven. The battle system in Legend of Dragoon is a mix of traditional Final Fantasy gameplay with a little bit of Paper Mario thrown into the mix. In battle, you can perform what's called additions. By pressing buttons at the correct time, you can increase your damage exponentially. On top of this, each character also has a Dragoon form that comes with increased stats and a different set of additions. Now, when it comes to broken strats in the game, there is really one that stands out, and that is speed. The speed stat determines how often you will attack. If you're slow and you're up against a fast enemy, then that enemy will be able to attack multiple times before you do, or vice versa. Fast characters with speed enhancing equipment make up some of the better party members. But we will also be considering overall stats, item usage, skills, additions, dragoon forms, and equipment to decide who is best. And let's get started with the sh tier. Kongol is the undisputed worst character in the game. In fact, I think this was a mistake on the dev side. If he had the counter skill throughout the entire playthrough, he might have been able to place much higher. Having high strength at the cost of horrible speed just isn't a good enough payoff. Not to mention that his additions damage don't scale throughout and end up being mediocre at the end of the game. Now you can correct his speed with items, but they're better used on the top tier characters. Ultimately, the only reason you would use Kongol is if you, well, wanted to. The Low Tier It pains me to put Rose in the low tier. When you first recruit her, Rose is an absolute beast. She'll outspeed and outdamage everyone in the party. She comes with a higher magic stat than both Mero and Shauna, but also has decent physical attack and spells like Astral Drain. She's incredibly squishy though, but has upper tier speed and damage potential. Unfortunately, she doesn't scale well through your playthrough and toward the end, will end up being one of your worst characters when it comes to stats, additions, and spells. So at the end of the day, she's a good party member to get you through the mid game, but will probably need to be replaced later on. The Mid Tier Dart is the protagonist of the series and also a required member of the party at all times. This usually isn't a problem. Most PS1 era Final Fantasies require you to use the hero as well. The big issue is that unlike Zidane, Cloud, and Squall, Dart is not an above average party member. In fact, he's average at best. He's a bit of a tank with some of the easiest additions to pull off. He also receives two different Dragoon forms, which helps. But speed and magic are middling, which hurts him in the end. Lavitz is replaced later in the game by Albert, so we're just going to go with Albert here. He has both high attack and high defense. The glaring weakness of Albert comes in the form of magical defense and below average speed. In the late game, enemies are more likely to attack via magic, so this puts him at a major disadvantage. So sharing a lot of the same weaknesses as Kongol, why is he on the mid-tier you ask? Well, Albert has the incredible skill, Rose Storm, which cuts damage in half for the entire team. This rockets him up this list as almost every party member in the Legend of Dragoon is squishy in some way. If he had higher speed and thus could use his Dragoon form more often, he would have easily have made it to the top tier. And speaking of which, let's move on to the top tier. Shauna, who is replaced later in the game by Miranda and is lovingly called Sharanda by the community, is your standard healer and magic user. 
Having one of the highest magic stats allows her to absolutely break the game with items. You see, in Legend of Dragoon, an attack item's effectiveness is based off of the magic stat. So if you have Sharanda use attack items regularly, she becomes one of the better characters in Legend of Dragoon. Equipped her with some of the rare late game attack items and she's capable of one-shotting bosses. On top of this, her Dragoon form is one of the best, really only being surpassed by Albert. Ultimately, her lack of strength makes no difference due to attack items, so if you can correct her defense with equipment, then you have a top tier party member. Hoshul is the definition of a glass cannon. He has low HP and defense, but man is this guy fast and does he hit like a truck. His additions can be difficult to master, but once done, his combos will dish out some of the highest damage in Legend Dragoon. He lacks in any form of multi-enemy attack, so in regular encounters, he'll lag behind. But man, face this guy up against a boss and watch him wallop them into non-existence. And also revive him multiple times. The God Tier The final member of this list and only member of the God Tier is Meru. Because of the glaring, broken nature of speed, Meru, being the fastest character in the game, inherits the title of, well, most broken character. Given the dancer gear, she is completely unstoppable, being able to attack three to four times before any of your other party members. On top of this, Mero's additions are some of the best in the game, with her final one having a 600% damage multiplier. Tag on that she has the second highest magic stat next to Sharanda, and she becomes another massively broken item user as well. Oh, and don't forget that she's one of the few characters that can reliably heal your party. And almost every spell she has in her Dragoon form is useful at some point in the game. Yeah, so literally no one really stands next to her. Now as for the best possible party, you have two options here. You have to use Dart, so treat him like your emergency button when things go wrong. Don't waste your speed enhancing equipment on him. Instead, build him out to be a tank and emergency healer with items. Mira is a must. Equip her with every speed enhancing equipment you have. The final member can be either Sharanda with her using secondary items if Miro isn't, or the Glass Cannon Hashel. Either way, if you're using Miro correctly, then you should be set. And that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it. Give Legend of Dragoon a playthrough. I know it's been on your list. Don't sleep on it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Bonus round. Top tier voice acting. <laughs> Hi, Joe. He cut my head off. Hey, Did you see that? He cut my head off. What a wuss. Get the Bernie step. Huh. Burning rush. Huh. Spinning king. Die. Huh. Heart blade. Take that. Five ring center. Die. Cool boogie. Take that! Flurry of sticks! Go! Volcano! Gust of wind, dance! Yeah! Blossom! Storm! Yeah.